Hello YouTubers and my subscribers. This is Larry up in Brainerd, Minnesota. This is part two in a series I'm doing on growing your own tobacco. And the first uh, one I did how to germinate tobacco and and get your seeds going. A lot of you took uh, advantage of uh, my offer. I sent seeds out to new subscribers and existing subscribers to my YouTube channel and uh, I'll have a link underneath uh, to that video on how to germinate and start your tobacco plants if uh, this is the first time you've seen this video there'll be a link under the video under just click on the show more button anyway uh, okay we've got our seeds started and we're getting our little seedlings going okay now you're going to decide uh, where you're going to plant your tobacco. Okay, if you don't have a lot of room, you just want to play around, have some fun with it. Maybe you want to grow a few plants for the hummingbirds. Hummingbirds go nuts on it. You can do like I did when I played around the first year and I was struggling for some area to grow my tobacco. And uh, you can grow it in a five-gallon pail with uh, a good potting mix. Works. Uh, I've got some pictures, I think, on here of that. You uh, can grow it in. You can go down and buy the dollar soil bags at Walmart, punch a couple holes on the bottom, and plant it in that. I've done that, too. Um, you know, it would be best if you're going to grow it, if you've got a little garden plot or area you can do it. Like I said, you're gonna, you want to prepare the soil, okay? Uh, tobacco plants are high nitrogen users, just like if you're going to grow sweet corn or something, you know, they like a lot of nitrogen. So I, what works best for me, is I put down a lot of horse manure, or any cow manure, any other kind of manure that you might have, and they love wood ash. You got some old fireplace, or if you burn wood, or you got a friend that does get some, get some, uh, and spread it out liberally over your uh, garden and uh, man they just love that okay now you're going to have to take your seedlings and what you want to do is you want to treat your tobacco plant seedlings just like you would a, a tomato plant you first of all you're going to have to harden it off i plant mine you know i'm i'm in minnesota and i won't put mine out until the last chance of frost is passed. You don't want to go through all this work and get your plants ready and get in a big hurry and get them out and then have them die because it got too cold, okay? Put them out. You're going to have plenty of time. Put them out when the last chance of frost. I start mine, oh, um, like April 10th, April 15th. I started April 1st last year and put it out about June 1st. I was a little too early. My plants got a little too leggy and stayed in the, the plant uh, or in the cups too long. They should, I'm saying about 45 days prior to uh, when you want to put them out, okay? Uh, some of you people are going to get seeds right away and you're in Florida or something. You can germinate right away and put them out, okay? Some are in colder climates. So judge it. About 45 days back from that's when you want to start your seeds and get them out. Okay, you're going to want to harden them off. You're going to want to take some of your seedlings and take them out during the... Don't put them in a real sunny spot, but take them outside. Put them in a tray from your inside. You've started these seedlings now. Take them out and put them in a, a, a shaded area. Let them kind of break and get used to being outside. Acclimate to that weather, you know. And after three, four, five, six, seven days, they're starting to... They got a little wind on them. Matter of fact, if you've got a little fan... Even while you're growing the seedlings, something I forgot to mention in the previous video, uh, you go ahead and put a fan on a little bit. It strengthens uh, the seedlings, uh, gets them ready for going outside. Okay, now that you've got your area prepared where you're going to put them and you got them hardened up, you can plant them and treat them just like you would a t uh, tomato plant. You can bury them up to the bottom of the leaves, okay? Uh, that doesn't mean just like you would a tomato plant. You know, you wouldn't, they're very leggy. You want to, you want to do that. You want to water them in well. Uh, I plant them, usually I try to look, 
and do it on a cloudy day or late in the afternoon. You don't want to go out in the morning. It's going to be a hot, sunny day and have the sun beat on them all day and plant. That is a recipe for, for failure. You don't want that. You want to be able to put them out later in the afternoon or a cloudy day, not too windy or whatever, and that's a great day to get them started. Some of my pictures here, you'll see I got some rings around ones I just started and I put out. And you can see this is a picture also about the size they were. They're probably three, four inches tall, the plants, when I put them out. Um, the thing, the reason I had put those around, I took some old sewer pipe. You can buy a cheap plastic sewer, and I made my own, rather than have a whole bunch of uh, coffee cans, which I didn't have enough because I first year I had planted 265 plants. It was hard to round up 265 coffee cans, so I thought, what else can I use? And I went down and got some sewer pipe and cut it, and that worked perfect uh, for cutworms. For one thing, I put them around, and I went out the next day, and a couple of my tobacco plants were cut out. What the heck? Well, it was cutworms, okay? Because they're going to do just like a tomato. If the plant seedling's not too big, they'll cut, cut it over sometimes, you know? So I did that, and it worked also good for... I could pour water right in there and really, you know, I wanted to keep the weeds down, so I thought, well, this way I can also just uh, water this in individual seedlings and stuff. That's the reason for the rings around there, if you're wondering. Okay, once you got them out there, you're going to start transplanting them. Um, uh, they're going to start getting about three, four feet tall, and you're going to start, and they're going to start getting a flower head on them. Okay. Uh, let me look through here, treat, um, okay, oh, spacing, uh, okay, let's get back to that, spacing, uh, space your plants when you plant them, uh, you want them two feet apart in a row, and the rows three feet apart, that's optimal, okay, because they're going to get big, these plants sometimes grow six, seven feet tall, and big leaves on the Virginia gold here. You're going to want to be able to walk between the rows because when those leaves start getting big and ripe, you, you, you bump them and hit them very much, they'll just crack like celery. So you want them, you want them to be able to make you some, some room. They're going to do better, okay? So plant them uh, two feet apart in three-foot rows. That's optimal, okay? Uh, when they're starting to, during this time when they're going to start to get a flower head, you're going to get what's called suckers, okay? And I've got links below the video on how to grow tobacco, their website and other ones. Go on there, they go way into more extensive uh, things. Suckers are, it's just like when you're doing a uh, tomato plant, they want to take off the additional, they're trying to make new growth. You've got your major leaves set, okay? When they start growing up, you're going to have major leaves. When they start getting uh, close to putting a flower head on, you're going to start getting little suckers wanting to come up. And I've got a picture on here of some suckers. It's like it's right above the main leaves. They're trying to start another little one. When they're a half an inch, three quarters inch long, snap them off. Just just take your thumb and it'll tip, you know, you just push them right off. Now, when your flower heads, uh, when it starts getting three, four feet tall, your tobacco plants, you, if you want to save some seeds, okay, for next year, pick out, like I said, a, a flower pod. You're going to get about 100 pods on a good tobacco plant. And in those pods, there can be up to 1,000 seeds. That's incredible. As you've already found out, uh, Tobacco seeds are very small, okay? So pick out two or three of your very best plants that you uh, that look the best in the garden. Let those go to seed. Don't break off the flower heads. Let those flower and 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 because you're going to be saving the seeds and that. And we'll go into that later, okay? The other ones you want to snap that flower head as soon as it starts making a flower head. It'll be obvious that the flower head break that off. It might even want to start to come back again. Break it down uh, two, three inches from the flower head. Break it down, snap it off, because you want all the energy to go into the leaves. You want to grow those leaves big and large, and, and that's what you want to get to production on. So between that 
and uh, keeping the suckers off and keeping it watered and, and everything else. Uh, you might want to side dress a little uh, fertilizer during the grow part, but when they're starting to get big, you want to back off on the fertilizer because you don't want them to stay real green. You want them to finish off, use up the last of the nutrients, and that's what, when you're going to start noticing, and we'll go into that in the next uh, video, about when to harvest. Your bottom leaves will be harvested first. They're going to start losing their green color, turning a yellow, a pale yellow, and you'll know limp, you'll know the perfect time, and I'll go into that in the next video of when to harvest the leaves, okay? Because it's going to be in a series. The bottom leaves will be harvested first, then a little higher, then a little higher, as they... Um, uh, they get ripe okay we'll go into that if you get any horn worms which is a problem in some in the south i never had any horn worms so i don't really know a lot about horn worms like i said go to how to grow tobacco link below the video here uh, those guys are you know deal with this more in the south they know how to handle them another thing was the first year i grew tobacco and fibs. About the time I got started getting flower uh, heads, I got these little teeny gnat type things called amphibs. You know, and you try to use dish soap and water. And finally, uh, I, a couple guys said, just leave them alone. They, they don't hurt anything. And, and I did, and they didn't. About the time I harvested my tobacco and everything, you know, they were gone. It was just during that sweet time, and there's a, you'll notice a sappy, sticky liquid when you break off the flower heads. And the, I don't know if they were attracted to that, uh, but they didn't hurt. They didn't bother anything. So, anyway, that is going to get you off to a great start. If you have any questions, uh, just uh, you can ask right below the video, and I'll get right back to you on it. And like I said, for any additional information, go to the Show More button right below the video here, and you'll get uh, links to the very first video I did on how to get your seeds germinated and started, and this, uh, and also for additional information on how to grow tobacco, the How to Grow Tobacco website and stuff, and where they break down into categories, you know, fertilizing and, and everything else. I didn't do a whole lot of additional fertilizing because I had it really prepared well with the horse manure and the and the potash, you know, putting down the wood wood ash and stuff. Uh, I didn't water a, a extensive amount. You can go out and feel it. They don't like real wet, you know, weather. If it's rain, uh, just you know, uh, just treat like I said, treat them like you would a tomato plant, you know. You can tell, you know, when, uh, and if you water, I would water, you know, later in the evening and stuff. But like I said, when you transplant these, harden them off, get them hard enough, and plant them later in the day or a cloudy day, uh, give them a chance, you know. Three, four inches tall and you're off to run it. You got any uh, questions, like I said, post them below the video. And I'll try to answer as uh, best I can. And great success to you. Like I said, there's nothing that'll make you feel uh, better and more proud when you grow your own tobacco. I mean, it's, it's a very liberating, uh, great feeling. You know, this is my own tobacco I raised. I mean, it's pretty neat. Who, who thought you could raise your own tobacco, right? Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's great, and especially when we get to the point where we're curing and smoking our own tobacco and you look at the, what they're selling cigarettes for, uh, you know, for up to fourteen dollars a pack in New York. It's crazy. Uh, why you don't raise your own tobaccos? Beyond me, I'd find out. I'd figure out something if I lived in New York. I guess I'd find a farmer friend. And say, hey, let's put some tobacco in. I'll give you half. You take. I'd do something rather than pay fourteen bucks. I'd be danged if I'd pay that. Anyway, good luck to everyone. And this is Larry Up and Brainerd. Ciao.